Hi there, I'm Sandy Allnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and this is going to be called Don't Give Up, Repairing Copic Problems. I had a whole other plan for this video, but some of you guys have really liked when I have goobers happen and I fix them during a video, so I'm going to use this really cute stamp set from Art Impressions and show you some mistakes. Yeah, going to show you some boo-boos, including a giant bloop. Lucky, lucky you. you get to see me make a, a total fool of myself here with a marker. Anyway, let's start by coloring bunnies. There's a couple different ways you can do bunny fur. And what I'm doing since I want him to blend into white is starting with my darks. Usually I start with my lights first. But on some of these, sometimes it, it makes sense to me to start with a darker color first and then work toward my lighter color because that gives me a little bit more control sometimes in terms of where I stop. If I, if I can stop my darks well ahead of time. But you can see I can also go over that dark area with the lighter marker. And when I do, I start getting it that mottled texture that a lot of times we don't like. But on a bunny, look how cute it looks when he, he looks all furry because it has that funky texture to it. So don't always worry about making everything perfectly smooth. When you're talking about animals and really cuddly fur, it can really be helpful to use those textures to your benefit. I'm gonna go back in and add a little bit more shadow area in just a few spots with my darkest color. And you could go darker than a four. Um, you could also, this is a neutral, one of the ends. I always tell people you don't really have to have the ends, you could just have the C's and the W's and be perfectly fine with the grays. I just happen to have ink in that one and that's what I ended up using. And I'm going to do this little guy with the W's, the warm grays. And I'm just going to put the color all the way around the outside edges. I'm not stressing out about the light source and all that kind of thing. So I'm going to go with my next lighter color, my medium tone and soften out the areas that are the black, uh, black, the dark gray sections. No, there's no black on my bunny. Although doing a black bunny would be kind of fun. I might have to do an Easter card with that. This bunny set, I will, I'll have some more stamps um, or stamped images colored with it so you can see different bunnies on Instagram because I like to do additional colorings of the same images from my videos on Instagram so you can see more options for how you can use them, how you can color them, different ways to combine them in scenes. This is three of the stamps that are in that one stamp set from Art Impressions, all used in one image. And I just stamp them all really close to each other and I'll create something to unify the scene as I move forward with this. Now here I'm taking my mid-tone color and softening things out and making it a little smoother. So you can see the difference between what he looks like versus the little fuzzy guy in the front. So you can go all different kinds of which ways with your bunnies, depending on whether you want them to look fuzzy or not. Now this one, I went out of the lines, whoops. So when you're using your colorless blender, you may have to do it a few times in order to kind of <laughs> uh, make, that, make that colorless blender work. It's not always gonna work the first time because you want it to sit and dry. So I did one coat of it, I'll go back and do it again later to try to keep pushing that color. This little bunny is gonna be in my lighter browns. And this E31 that I'm using is overfilled. I know it's overfilled, it's blooped on me a couple other times, so I was scribbling off before using it because I didn't want to bloop. So remember that in a few minutes because <laughs> that will be an important fact. So I'm uh, blending that out with an E30 and I wasn't positive exactly what those little shapes were, whether that was more of his tummy or his little paw. So uh, again, remember that part in just a few minutes because you will find out, <laughs> you'll find out the error I made. So there I go with the zero marker, trying to push some of that color back into that ear on the second bunny uh, in just successive layers, little by little, um, continuing to add more of the color of Slender. We'll just continue to push that back into the gray. Now here, I was going to add a little bit of that E31 in and it went, oh no! Yes, that is dramatic gopher. Panic, freak out, deep breath. 
okay? So before it dried, I thought, well, let me throw a little bit of color of Splendor in there, and then I'm gonna move on with the image and see if I can fix it as I go. So I'm gonna let that dry, let it sit there, big goober, not gonna, I'm not gonna flip out over it as of yet. And I'll just move on and color some of the other pieces. When you have a goof up like that, don't throw the piece of paper away right away. Don't give up. Go practice on the rest of the image. So even if I screwed this up, at least I'm gonna get practice on what colors am I gonna use for my, my egg? What colors am I gonna use for my flower? I can sit and practice all the other images, restamp it, and then do it again if I really need to. But it's always possible that I could save things. So don't don't write it off right away. Just save it if you if you can. So here I am going in with the zero marker again, just like I did before. Just push that color back in little by little, and you know, kind of let it work into itself. When you do have a goober like that, depending on what the color is, that is a fairly light color. The more other colors you have on the card or on the drawing or whatever you're using, that are dark rich colors the less important that goober is going to become so if i were to make that flower maybe a red color that might totally cover up all of that brown and make things better right away i decided to try to leave it yellow because i wanted to see what would happen if i just kept building up the scene all the way around the rest of the image first and just see if i can keep pushing that bloop back in and removing it until it was not a distraction anymore. So I'm going to add some shading to my green and using a nice nice rich dark green. That G14, which is the base color that I used, is a, a really good medium type of green. So if you're looking for a good spring green, that one's pretty, uh, pretty bright and intense, works well with a lot of other colors. And then I'll take a G17 to do some blending and blend some of that, that G28. G28 and G29, by the way, are almost the same color, so don't stress out. If you have one, you pretty much have the other one. bunch of the colors look pretty much the same. If you have my hex chart, you'll know that they are right next to each other on the chart, and it's easy to see on that hex chart what isn't going to be very different from, from each other so that you'll be able to save yourself some money and buy some markers that are different that are going to help you in your coloring rather than buy ones that are the same. So going over with my light color allows all of that color to, to blend in, mix a little bit better. Another layer of that zero marker and I'm starting to not see that anymore other than you see a little haze of gray. That's where the paper is just wet right now and that will continue to dry and lighten up. So I'll move on now, go back to coloring my pinks in my flowers and a little bit more in my egg, adding more color onto it. On the egg, I'm doing kind of darker colors around the left and the right. And then I'll um, have the lighter colors in the center so it'll give a little dimension to my, my egg. And I'm just gonna use a dark pink. I'm not going for a, a red because I don't wanna have too much color on here, but uh, kind of a dark, or medium, I guess medium red or dark pink, not really sure which you'd call that, but giving a little bit of shading and dimension and blend it out a little bit. Go one more time over that area that blooped and see how, how that works. Um, seems to be disappearing my goober pretty well. I did decide to go over all of my yellow. My lightest yellow had been a Y00, but the Y04 has more punch to it. And I wanted to have, like I said, more intense color to distract from that area where I goobered. And now I'm taking out the bad pen, bad E31, bad, bad, bad pen. But instead of just punishing it and scribbling it off on a piece of scratch paper, why not use it? So I'm just gonna scribble some background underneath of here. So I'll have some area of dirt where my, my little bunnies are gonna be sitting in the garden amongst the flowers. And I'm gonna make it look almost a watercolory type of ground situation underneath of it. I am going to put this into a, a die. I'm gonna cut out a die frame for it so I don't have to go all the way to the edge. So you can decide how far up you want your scene to go. I want it to sort of fade out into white toward the top. But I'm trying to just use up that E31 so it doesn't bloop on me anymore because 
that was a problem, right? And now I'm going to use a, a light, one shade lighter than that to soften out more of these edges. And I'm not being real super careful. I'm just filling in color because I'm going to add some texture to it, some dirt as I go. I'm going to use a dark brown to put some shadows underneath each one of my characters that are here. And I know this looks like big and weird and goofy right now, but hang tight. My stuff always looks like a hot mess until it doesn't. <laughs> so I'm giving it a nice rich color because that rich dark color is going to allow the other colors to look like they really pop up off of it. And now I'm going to go for an E34, which is two shades darker than that bloopy E31. And I want more of my heavy color to be toward that center. So I'm going to try to do some blending to soften out the, that really dark brown, dark brown color by adding this medium brown all the way around it. And I'm scribbling. You can see I'm just making kind of scribbly, scrunchy types of marks. And uh, then I'm going to use that E31 again and go around those edges. Because the more color I put on here, the more it's going to bleed and blend and move around. And I want it to be soft. Because the soft look is going to what, be what makes it look like dirt. And I also don't want it to have a lot of hard edges necessarily because those hard edges will compete with the hard edges of the stamps. And I want it to just kind of disappear and be background. So I went in with an E00 to try to pull out some light areas, just kind of throwing in some more texture in here. A lot of different ways that you can add texture. You can do this with a zero marker as well. But an E00 just lightened up some areas all the way around. And up toward the top, I'll use the E00 because then I can get it to do that getting lighter thing toward the top. Now on top of all of that, now that I've got my shading down the way I want it, I'm going to add my texture. And I'm basically just making little lumpy shapes. And I'm not going to make it even and perfect everywhere because if you make it even and perfect, it's not going to look like natural dirt. But in the darkest areas, I'm using the E57. So it's a darker color in, from the dark into the medium area because that will show up. But if I start getting it into the lighter areas using this E57, it's going to start looking too contrasty, too dark. So I want to keep that in the lighter areas. And then I'm going to switch to the E34 and continue on a little bit more of that same texture because that's going to give the illusion of that slow transition of color across the whole dirt area and it'll look a little bit softer than just having that that dark brown stop at some point and if you get too many if, if it looks too fussy then go over the whole thing once with that e31 i'm not going to do that here but if you end up with just too much detail and you've over fussed it then use just one more quick pass of another color because that will blend it all and soften it just a little bit but I'm going to leave mine as is for now. Uh, the one final touch I'll do here, though, will be using a zero marker to make a couple of little stones. And it helps if you have enough color underneath of it for the zero marker to show up against. This is the Avriel dotted rectangle set. I use this thing like constantly, so it's got a bunch of different shapes in it. I've made a frame to go around my bunnies and figured out exactly where that's going to fit. But I wanted a sentiment that also had that around it, that little dotted pattern that this die set has. I had to make my own because my sentiment didn't fit in the one that came with the set. So I've just cut a couple different pieces around my sentiment until I created a rectangle of the shape that I needed it to be. So you can do that with any size that you need for your sentiment or your image on your card. Here's the finished one with its darling little three bunnies, and we all know where the big brown blooper is, okay? You see it there if you look carefully, but nobody else is gonna notice that. That's just a secret between us, so don't tell anybody. Just hit the like button if you like the fact that I recovered from that and that I was brave enough to put it on YouTube and share this with your friends. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel. You can click there to watch a couple other videos. My Copic Jumpstart class is also listed here if you're interested in seeing that. And supplies are in the doobly-doo as well as on the blog. And I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.